Okay, so right before you land, they show like the video of you know how to get through customs and immigration and declaration and luggage inspection. And actually, since Taiwan has taken such good care of the COVID pandemic, they're actually already looking forward to like the swine flu. So right after you get off the plane, you actually pick up this card that states that you just arrived from a country that is not at risk for swine flu. And then you just hold on to that until you get to the luggage inspection and then you just give it to them so you don't have to like go through that. But basically, once you get out of the gate, you're supposed to receive a text with a QR code to the form and all the information you need for the whole like health declaration. But remember, I filled out the paper form when boarding because I didn't have a Taiwan ID. So they told me to fill out the form, but little did I know, I still could have filled out the online form Anyways, they taught me how to do it after I landed. Because I didn't have a Taiwan ID, I did have to fill out the declaration form with my US passport, which kind of freaked me out actually, because I know if you go into Taiwan right now on a visa, you do need to have a negative COVID test, which I didn't have. And I already landed in Taiwan. So um, that worried me a little bit. But when I asked lady, she was like, it's fine because I do still hold a Taiwan passport. So I just um, provided that information on the health declaration. So um, it was fine. I didn't need a negative COVID test. But if you have more questions, I'll go into more detail about that um, in a different video. So after you get out of the gate, there's like this line and it's like a super well-oiled machine. They already have the logistics down. There's like different categories of people. A, you filled out the online health declaration before boarding and you already got the text with the QR code. You're good to go. You can just like go through to luggage inspection. B, you don't have a phone number that the Taiwan government can track you with. So usually the phone carriers on the outside of the terminal after you get out of baggage claim, but because of the whole like quarantine situation, the government has actually brought those phone carriers inside right at the front of your gate. So you can purchase a SIM card if you need to. And once again, because this is a service that is required by government quarantine, the government has price regulated everything to prevent price gouging and just make it as easy as possible for everyone to abide by the quarantine regulations. I didn't purchase a SIM card, but I believe there's a set price of a thousand NT for whatever the basic plan is. And it's definitely enough to get you through quarantine. This whole like subsidy price regulation via the government, it's all like part of the same program that the government has mandated because of the quarantine regulations. For example, like the phone service, any of the transport options, the hotel subsidy. I'll make a separate video about all the costs and the fees and everything, but everything is price regulated. So you don't have to worry about you know, somebody scamming you or whatever. All right, so I was able to pass the SIM card buying station because I have roaming on my cell phone and they said I could use my international number. But so I was still able to fill out the form with my phone number, but actually the government still requires you to have a Taiwan phone. So I'll touch on that later, but TLDR, the police called me at my hotel and was like, hey, you need to have a Taiwan phone number, which I didn't have because I was told I didn't need to buy one at the time, but I'm already in my hotel. So they actually have a program where they can deliver a phone to you at your hotel room. I'll go into more details about that in a future video. Okay, so after you successfully fill out the health declaration form and you get that like barcode, you're able to get to the next station, which is where the CDC tells you like which day you're quarantined for and you can't come out until midnight, all the rules you need to follow and taking your temperature and everything. And then after that is the luggage inspection station, which remember if you have the card that uh, states that you just arrived from a country that is not at risk for swine flu, you can just give that card to the agent and um, you can just bypass the inspection. They actually told us that our flight was like the only flight of the day, which is crazy because we arrived at like 4 a.m. So those poor luggage inspection people were just sitting there. Nobody went through them because we all had the card because we all came in from the same flight. But basically after you pass the luggage inspection station, then you come to immigration. And so at immigration, make sure you fill out the arrival card. There's like a little stand with all the cards and pens where you can fill it out. Just make sure you have like the name of your hotel ready. I can go more to detail about the arrival card when I make the video about the different forms. But basically the two key factors are there's two addresses that you'll need. One is where you're going to be quarantining, whether it's a hotel or your home address or whatever. And then the second one is where you're going to be staying after quarantine. So if you're quarantining at home, then you would just need one address, which is your home address. But because a lot of the quarantine hotels are specifically quarantine hotels. So if you are staying at another hotel, you do have to book a different hotel after your quarantine period or like me, I'm only staying in the quarantine hotel for now and then I'm gonna go home after. So I would just put the quarantine hotel first and then my home address second. So then you go through immigration, typical, they just stamp your passport and then you get down to baggage claim. And so once you arrive, you can see the conveyor belt is actually kind of damp. 
they actually spray down all the luggages when they come off the plane before releasing them into baggage claim. So my luggages were kind of wet, but that's great that they're disinfecting everything again and once it comes off the plane. And then they actually disinfect it again if you take a quarantine taxi to your hotels. Okay, so after you get all your luggages, then you go through customs. If you have anything to declare, you go to the goods to declare line. If you have nothing to declare, you just go to the nothing to declare line and then you go out of the terminal. Once you get out of the customs declaration, there will be signs that show you what the different transportation options are. So there's a rental car, taxi, bus, or someone can pick you up. So once again, this is all price regulated by the government because um, you're not allowed to take public transportation. So even though there is a metro station inside the airport, there's a huge sign outside saying anyone who is arriving and is required to go through government quarantine is not allowed to take public transportation and there will be a fine if you are caught so technically like it is the honor system but they are contact tracing you through your phone so you don't want to get caught you don't want to risk that just take the taxi take the bus have someone pick you up whatever and also um you can't call like a uber or a ride sharing service just because that's not mandated by the government once you get out of the terminal, um, if you do need to get cash or currency exchange, um, there are ATMs right there available. There's also a currency exchange counter right there. But if not, you just follow the signs for the 24 hour taxi service. You have to go outside the double doors. There's like a person in a uniform who's standing there guiding you, directing you. Everyone is so nice there if you have any questions. Just make sure that you go outside to the taxi counter because that's the official government taxi. There is like a desk inside the terminal that says like taxi or like limos or whatever. I don't know about that, but just for good measure, just follow what everybody else is doing and go to the outside taxi stand. Uh, because that is for sure the one that's mandated by the government. Okay, so there's a bunch of different transportation options. I'll make a separate video on the different options and how much each one costs. But really quickly, the bus to go to like the south of Taiwan is 400 NT. But I'll just talk about the taxi situation specifically just because that's what I took. But actually, I was planning to take the bus originally to go to the south of Taiwan, but um, in the end I decided to stay in Taipei. So that's why I did take a taxi, but you can't take public transportation, which is what I usually do. So that's another reason why I decided just to stay in Taipei because it's closer to the airport. And then after I'm done with quarantine, I'll just take the bullet train down to the south. Okay, so there is a published table for set prices for taxis, depending on what airport you're arriving in to what city you're going to. It doesn't matter if you're going to a hotel or your home for quarantine, everything is set price. It doesn't matter how far you need to go. I know people have taken a taxi all the way to the south of Taiwan, which could be easily four or five hours, but that's because you can't take public transportation, which is why the government has subsidized all the taxi rides to make sure it's an affordable price for you to abide by the quarantine regulations. So once you arrive at the taxi counter, you show them the same health declaration certificate with the barcode at the bottom so they can scan it just so they can literally trace who you had contact with and at what time, literally contact tracing, which to me, I feel like it's so smart, it's so genius, um, it's so high tech in this digital age. I don't understand why people who are outside of Taiwan who are not even going through this government quarantine are complaining about this whole like I don't want my government to track me thing and like invasion of privacy whatever because I'm just saying like this is the same thing as if you go to Disneyland and you get like fast passes or whatever like you have to go back to the ride at a specific time and then you scan whether it's your wristband or your phone or a ticket whatever so you scan it they know who you are what time you went there what ride you went on just because it's the happiest place on earth and Disney can do whatever they want to keep it that way well well, Taiwan is currently one of the safest countries on earth so they can do whatever they need to to keep it that way in my opinion okay so after they scan your health declaration certificate you just fill out this quick form you just need your flight number your name uh, your phone number and the address that you're going to whether it's your home for home quarantine or for the hotel if it is a hotel and you only know the name of it you can just like tell the person at the counter and they'll look up the address for you and they'll just write it in for you so like don't worry about that all the government mandated quarantine hotels have like a number associated with them at least in Taipei I'm not sure about the other cities so the person at the counter just tells the taxi driver like oh she's going to number 28 and then the driver just knows where hotel 28 is and then they just take you and so before loading up your luggage they actually spray down your luggage again and then they also spray like yourself the bottoms of your shoes your bags your backpack your carry-on because those obviously didn't go through the baggage claim so those were not already previously disinfected so anyways just another spray down for a good measure before you get into the car with someone i was surprised um that my taxi didn't have those 
like big plexiglass or like plastic um, dividers in between me and the driver um, just because I've seen that a lot on the news and um, in other people's like photos and stuff but mine was just like open so whatever so when I booked my hotel they actually told me to call them 10 minutes prior to my arrival just so they can anticipate my arrival and get everything ready that they need to and then they also told me to remind my taxi driver to drop me off in the basement in the parking garage instead of the front lobby just so there's like a separation of like the regular lobby and the quarantine guests I know some hotels are still running as a normal hotel so they want to minimize the exposure of their uh, quarantine guests versus their non-quarantine guests, which is another reason why most cities don't publish the names of their hotels um, because they don't want guests to not book their hotel in fear of uh, coming into contact with someone who is in quarantine if they do know that um, the hotel they're staying on is one of the quarantine hotels. But I think Taipei is a special case just because there's more people who are going to be quarantined in, in Taipei. So they are able to have designated hotels just for quarantine. That's why they were able to publish a list online. They even publish like the availability of the rooms in each hotel. So if you are trying to book one, you can go online. Um, so my driver did drop me off in the basement in the parking garage. Once I got out of the car, the hotel staff, they're not allowed to help you with your luggages or anything just because they don't want to come in contact with any of your belongings. So there are luggage carts in my hotel that my taxi driver was nice enough to help me load up and then once I had all my luggage this hotel staff who was also wearing a bunch of protective gear and a mask and a gown and goggles and everything he took my temperature checked me in told me my room number and said that the door was already open they didn't even give me a hotel key because you're not allowed to leave your room so you don't need a key and if you do leave your room then you can't get back in and they know that you've broken quarantine so there's literally a path with plastic walls from ceiling to floor just to contain any exposure. So he pressed the elevator button for me and it just, the doors closed, I went up and I got to my room and I unloaded my stuff, left the luggage cart outside and I've been inside this room ever since. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be doing a separate video on like hotel booking and guidelines and rules and regulations and options and meals and all that stuff. A lot of people are, have been asking me about like meal services and what the options are and deliveries and all that stuff. But yeah, that's basically my personal experience coming into Taiwan from the United States. So I'm sure I'll have more information to share with you guys as the days go by. So please let me know if you have any questions. I'll also do like a room tour and what was provided for me and everything in that video just because this video is getting too long. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and like this video and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!